section 2.1 we're going to look at uh, three different measures of change over an interval. Now uh, some of these we've already looked at here. So the first is change, the second is percent change, and the third is average rate of change. Now all of these are calculated between two points. So our notation here when we have the little uh, one, this is going to be our point earlier, okay, and this is going to be our point later. So to find change, this is just the differences in our outputs. So I'm just going to take my output later minus my output earlier. And my units here for change well, if I have an output unit minus an output unit, I'm left with just output units. Okay, now percent change we've looked at uh, before when we were talking about exponential functions. So to calculate the percent change, I'm going to take my output later, subtract from it my output earlier, like we do with change, but now I need some sort of metric of where I started, so I'm going to divide by my output earlier. So this is my... Now this is going to give me a ratio to change it to a percent, we would just multiply it by a hundred percent. And my units here, do you see if I subtract outputs, I'm left with output units. And so then I have my output units divided by output units. Well, those are going to cancel out, so our units are just going to be percent. And then average rate of change, again, we've uh, looked at this when we were talking about slope. So this is just going to be my output later minus my output earlier. So that's my rise, and then we divide by the run. My input later minus my input earlier. So you can think of this as just as, as slope. And graphically, this would end up being the slope of the secant line. So what I mean by secant is the line that would connect two points. Again, here we have change is just the difference in our outputs with output units. The percent change would be the difference in our outputs, but then I'm going to divide by my initial output and change that to a percent. And my units are just percent, and then average rate of change, you can think of this as rise over run. And I'm going to have my output units here divided by my input units, so it would be output per input. So when we are interpreting the uh, these changes, we're going to need the same components that we did when we are going to um, interpret slope on the first test. So my win, well this is going to be the input interval. Okay, so that's going to be from, you know, whatever x1 might be to whatever x2 might be. Okay, so my what, just like before, is going to be the output description. So then we're going to have to decide whether we increased or decreased, okay? And we're going to determine this by the sign. So obviously a negative change would be a decrease. A negative average rate of change would be a decrease. A positive percent rate of percent change would be an increase. And additionally we have here when we're calculating average uh, rate of change, so this is only for average rate of change, we're going to need, you know, on average somewhere in that interpretation. And then how much, well this is just going to be the number that we calculate, and we have to remember to include our units here. And those units are going to depend on which one we're talking about. So if it's change, it's just whatever the output units are, if it's percent change, it's always percent, regardless of what our input or output units are. And if it's average rate of change, we're going to need output units per input units. 
All right, so let's look at an example here. So the following graph shows the Social Security Advisory Board's estimate of the federal government Social Security assets between 2002 and 2040. So we're going to use this graph to estimate the outputs for 2012. So let's see, if I come down here, 2012, this would be 2015. So 2012 would be a little less than half, so that's going to be about right here. And we want to estimate uh, at 33. So if this is 35, 33 would be a little bit over here. So those are the two points we're going to estimate. So this would be, let's say, uh, 12 would be my input, and my output would be about 2.7. Okay, and similarly for my second point, my input would be 33, and my output would be about 2.2. Okay, and in the notation we used in our formula before, this would be my x1 because it's earlier, and this would be f of x1. And similarly, this is the later point, so this is going to be x2, and this would be f of x2, or the output. Okay, so we want to calculate and interpret the change. So first, the calculation is not too tough. Again, our formula is f of x2 minus f of x1. Okay, so at this point, that would be the output at 33 minus the output at 12. So we're going to get 2.2 .2 minus 2.7 and get negative 0.5. All right, now we need to look back here at what our output units are. Okay, so my output units here are going to be trillion dollars. Okay, so the units for my change should be trillion dollars. Okay, and we got a negative change here, and if we look back on our graph, that's not surprising because you see from this point to my next point we went down here. Okay, so calculating it not too tough. Now, okay, so to interpret this change, I'm going to say from my x1 here is 12, which would um, represent 2012. Okay, so this is my uh, x1 right here. Okay, to my x2 is 33, so that would be 2033. Okay, so this piece right here is my win. Okay, now my what is going to be the output. So if I jump back over here, we can see again that this output was social security assets. So we're going to say my what is going to be the social security assets. So this is my what here, the output description. Alright, now did it increase or decrease? Now the way that we determine that is from our sign and here, again, we calculated a negative change, so that's going to be decreased. All right, and then my how much is going to be my 0 0.5, so that's the value of my change, and my units are going to be trillion dollars. Okay, so again, those parts of our uh, interpretation. The when was my domain, the what was my output description, I decided whether I increased or decreased 
um, based on the sign and then my how much um, is the value that I calculated and I need to remember units. So I've got my when, my what, and my, whether I increased or decreased. This is my how much and my units here for change are going to be output units. Okay, now similarly we can calculate the percentage change and interpret that. So the calculation, I'm going to take my uh, output later minus my output earlier divided by my output earlier but then I need to change that to a percent. So this would be F of 33 minus F of 12 divided by F of 12 and then I change that to a percent. So my outputs there would be 2.2 minus 2.7 divided by 2.7 and then I'm going to change that to a percent. So when I do this calculation, I get negative 18.519%. Now our interpretation is going to be almost exactly the same. The only thing that's different here is going to be our how much because we have a different value there and then our units. So here I'm going to have from 2012 to 2033 just like we had before. The output which is the same, the social security assets Okay, now I need to decide whether they increased or decreased. So they decreased because I have a negative percent change here. And then the only thing that's going to be different is my how much and my units, which is going to be 18.51%. So again, this is my when here. This is my what then I need to have whether I increased or decreased, oh, which is right over here, and then my how much with units. So now we want to draw the secant line that cuts through from 12 to 33. So my secant line, 12, right here and 33 would be somewhere over here and the secant line is going to be this line that connects these two. Ideally that should be straight. Now to find the slope of this line we're going to calculate slope just like we did before so again this first point is 12 and 2.7 and my second point is going to be 33 and 2.2. Okay, so to calculate the slope, I'm going to have my output later minus my output earlier over my input later minus my input earlier. So this is going to be f of 33 minus f of 12 over 33 minus 12. So in this case, we're going to have 2.2 minus 2.7, and then we're going to divide that by 33 minus 12. Okay, so just to clarify here, we're going to have negative 0.5 trillion dollars in my numerator over 11 years in my denominator. Okay, so then 
my result would be negative 0 0.045 and my units here are going to be trillion dollars per year. Okay, and again my output, my units for slope, which are going to be the same, are always going to be output units per input unit. Okay, so the calculation and the interpretation of uh, average rate of change are going to be exactly the same as what we had before. So we just calculated this on the previous slide and I think we got negative 0 0.45 trillion dollars per year, if I remember correctly. Okay, so now when we interpret that, we need our when, our what, whether we increased or decreased, how much with units. So my when is going to be the same from 2012 to 2033. My what here is the same again, the social security assets. Okay. Now whether I increase or decrease, that's going to depend on the sign, and again we're negative. So we decreased and because this is average rate of change, we need to include somewhere here on average. So we increased, um, decreased on average maybe, because it didn't necessarily decrease the entire time that much, but over the interval it did. Okay, and then my how much are going to be 0 0.045 and my units are going to be trillion dollars per year. So the, again, this is my when, this is my what, I need whether I increased or decreased. Now in this particular case, because we're talking about average rate of change, we need on average. I have my how much. And again, my units here for average rate of change are going to be output units per input units. Here we have the time after 7 a.m. and the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So I guess if we started here, zero hours, this would be 7 a.m., maybe 8, 9, 10, 11. Now there's no 5, so we're going to skip noon and jump to uh, 1 p.m., 2, 3, 4. 4 and then 5 p.m. Okay, so if we wanted to find and interpret the change in temperature from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., okay, so my 8 a.m. is going to be right here, and then my 5 p.m. is going to be this point right here. Okay, so this is going to be very similar to what we did, only now we're using a numeric representation as opposed to a graphic representation. So for change, I need my, the change in my output. So I need f of 10 minus f of 1, which is just going to be 69 minus 58. Again, later minus earlier. So I'm going to get 11 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so when I interpret this, I'm going to say from my first x, which would be one hour after 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., to x2, which is 10 hours after 7 a.m. or 5 p.m. Okay, my uh, output then is the temperature 
which is my what. Okay, now I need to know whether the temperature increased or decreased. Now here my change is positive, so the temperature increased. And my how much is 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So just to uh, highlight this one more time, this is my win here. Okay, the temperature or the output description is my what. I need to know whether it increased or decreased, and I determine this from the sign. And then lastly, I have my how much with units. Okay, and the units for change are just going to be whatever my output units are. So if I took 69 degrees Fahrenheit and subtracted 58 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm just left with Fahrenheit. Okay, now to find and interpret the percent change. So I'm going to need my output later, which would be F of 10 minus my output earlier, which is F of 1 divided by my output earlier, which is F of 1. So this would be 69 minus 58. And then I'm going to divide by 58. But we need to change these to a percent. I forgot that there. So now I need to multiply it by 100 to change that to a percent. And I got 18.966%. So again, my degrees Fahrenheit in the numerator cancel with my degrees Fahrenheit in the denominator, and I'm left with just the percent. I'm going to say from x equals 1 would be 8 a.m. to x equals 10 is going to be 5 p.m. Okay, now I need my what, which is the output. Uh, description, which is the temperature. Okay, now I need to know whether it increased or decreased. My uh, percent change is positive, so it increased. And my how much is going to, with units, is going to be 18.966%. Okay, so again, my win here is the span of the inputs. My what is the output description. I need to know whether I increased or decreased, and I determine that because this is positive here. I increased, and then my how much with units is 18.966%. Okay, so find and interpret the average rate of change. Okay, so we can do this just like we did slope on test one. So I want my output later, which would be F of 10, minus my output earlier, F at 1, divided by 10 minus 1. Okay, so this is going to give me 69 minus 58, and my output units are degrees Fahrenheit, over 10 minus 1, and my input units are hours. So I am left with 1.222, and my units are going to be degrees Fahrenheit per hour. All right, so when we're interpreting this, again, I need my when, my what, whether I increased or decreased. And because we're talking about average rate of change here, we need to make sure we include on average somewhere in that interpretation. And then how much with units, and we've already seen that our units are going to be output units per input units. So I'm going to say from 8 a.m to 5 p.m. The temperature increased on average 
1.222 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. Let's look back at the actual data that we had here. All right, so let's talk about why this might be uh, a little bit deceiving here. So if I'm looking at the actual data we see, so that first hour the temperature increased, then it increased, then it increased, it's going up, it's going up, and then it stayed the same, then it started to go down, go down, go down. Okay, so we see the temperature went up for a while and then it came down. Okay. Now what might be deceiving about this is that the average rate of change only tells us or the change or um, the percent rate of change, they only look at those two points. So we only get the net change. We don't have any sort of idea that it decreased on the interval. So our reason that this might be a little bit um, misleading is that the average rate of change does not show that the temperature rises and then falls. Okay. Instead here, it only shows the net change over the interval. Okay, and um, this might give the appearance that there was a constant rise every hour when actually it went up for a while and decreased for a while. Alright, so the average rate of change does not show that the temperature rises and then falls. Instead, it shows the net change over the interval giving the appearance that there is a constant rise every hour when actually there is not. So now we, we have already found the, uh, these changes from a graphical representation then from a numeric representation, now we want to try to find change from an algebraic representation. And this is when our calculator is going to help us out here. Alright, so to find my change, and th I think the context is the same here. Yes, we're just using a um, calculator to find these values instead of a table. So I need my output at 11 so that's going to be four hours I think after seven and then my output at 430 which would be uh, nine and a half I think okay so here I want my output later which would be the nine and a half minus my output earlier which would be my four now to calculate this we're going to use our calculator. So I'm going to go to my graph menu and I have some stuff in here from before that I want to delete. Okay, so I'm going to enter my equation into y1. Negative 0.8 x squared plus 10 x plus 49 and then choose execute ok 
okay now because I'm given the input and I want to find the output I can just evaluate my function so I'm going to jump back to my run menu and I want to find my output later so I'm going to choose vars for variables we save that in our graph menu so I want y1 of nine and a half and I want to subtract from that the output or y1 at four so I got negative 4.4 and my units here are going to be degrees Fahrenheit okay and I hope you see that the notation that we use in the calculator is almost the same as the notation that um, you know we use over here when we're doing this by hand however we're going to use a y1 because we saved our equation in y1 okay so similarly we can construct the change okay so here I want uh, f at 9.5 minus my output earlier f at 4 but then I need to divide by my output earlier f of 4 and then multiply it by a hundred percent to change that to a percent so I already have my negative 4.4 here but we could do it again because I want you guys to see that I'm going to need parentheses around my entire numerator so I want y1 at nine and a half minus y1 at four now I need to close those parentheses for my numerator divided by and then I want my output earlier which is at four and then I need to change this to a percent so I'm going to multiply that by a hundred so here I get negative 5.774 percent okay and I'm sure you guys could guess that next we're going to calculate the average rate of change using our calculator and here I'm going to need parentheses around my entire numerator entire denominator so this is going to be f at 9.5 minus f at 4 over 9.5 minus 4 and again when we type this in the calculator I'm going to need parentheses around my numerator and parentheses around my denominator all right so I want to first open my parentheses for my numerator y1 at nine and a half minus y1 at four close the parentheses for my numerator divided by open the parentheses for my denominator nine and a half minus four close those okay and here I get negative point eight negative 0.8 okay and my units are going to be output per input so degrees Fahrenheit per hour so we've looked at an algebra uh, numeric graphic algebraic representation so the last representation we want to look at is a verbal so here we have some information about uh, Kelly Services Inc is a global provider of staffing services with a revenue of 4,850 million, so I think that would be 4.8 billion dollars in 2004, and a revenue of 5,700 million, again 5.7 billion dollars in 2007. Okay, so the earlier value would be 2004 here, so this would be my X1 and this would be my x2 my later value okay so then my outputs here this would be the corresponding to the earlier so this is going to be my output 
earlier and this would be my output later. Okay, so to calculate this, if I'm looking for the change, it's just going to be the change in my outputs. So that's going to be my output later, which is 5,700, again my units are million dollars, minus 4,850 million dollars, and the difference between those is 850 million dollars. Alright, so to interpret this, I think we've got this down now, but we need our when, our what, whether we increased or decreased, how much with units. So I'm going to say my win is from 2004 to 2007. My what is Kelly Services Revenue. All right, now I need to know whether it increased or decreased. This number is positive, so it increased. And then my how much is 850. And then my units are million dollars. Now if I want to find the percent change here, again, my output later would be 5,700 million dollars and then my output earlier would be 4850 million dollars and then I'm going to divide by my output earlier which is going to be 4850 million dollars and then I need to change that to a percent so here we would get 17.526 and my units, remember all that million dollars stuff in the numerator canceled with the million dollars in the denominator and I'm left with just percent. So I'm going to say from 2004 to 2007 um, the revenue here Again, it increased because it's positive. And my how much is 17.526%. So from 2004 to 2007, Kelly Services revenue increased 17.526%. We want to find the uh, average rate of change. Okay, so I'm going to need the change in my output. So my output later here would be $5,700 million minus my output earlier, which would be $4,850 million. And then I'm going to divide that by my input earlier, which is 2007, which is a year, minus 2004, which is also a year. Okay. So when I calculate that, I get 283.333, and then my units are going to be output per input, million dollars per year. Okay, so again, my sentence of interpretation would be from 2004 to... 2007, the revenue of Kelly Services increased on average, because we're talking about the average rate of change, by um, 283.333 million dollars Per year. We are given this formula that gives the um, cumulative capacity of wind power worldwide, and our, my units are 1,000 megawatts, X years after 1990. Okay, so because W is an exponential function, we can find our constant 
percent change okay so we can do this just like you guys did on test one okay so I'm going to use my B minus 1 times a hundred percent here and that's going to give me if I subtract 1 1.271 minus 1 times a hundred percent is going to give me 27 point one percent okay now this is slightly different the constant percent range than the percent range uh, percent change between 1990 and 2007 so you might want to correct that little typo in your notes if it's similar so this is going to be 17 years afterwards so this is going to be w of 17 minus W of 0 divided by my output earlier and then multiply it by 100%. All right, so I want to open the parentheses for my numerator and I'm going to go to Y1 VARS graph Y1 of 17 and I'm going to subtract from that the output at 0, close the parentheses for my numerator, and then I'm going to divide by the output at 0. Now I need to multiply that by a hundred to change that to percent, and I'm going to get 5,794 0.872%. It's slightly different um, context here, and we get two dramatically different answers. So let's think about this. This is my constant percent change, is saying that every year. Uh, the amount of wind power is increasing 27.1 percent okay however here I'm saying over this interval of 17 years it's increasing 5,794 percent so explain the difference between part A and part B so part A shows the percent change for one year to the next whereas part B shows the percent change over a seven-year period. All right, so in part A over here, when we find the um, constant percent change from the equation, that shows the change from one year to the next, whereas in part B, where we calculate the percent change from 1990 to 2007, this is showing the percent change over a 17-year period.